Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. This is Demetria Zinga with ChristianHomeschoolMoms.com and this is my channel Moms S. Thank you so much for joining. So this week I was talking to Pepper and Pine. If you don't know who she is, I will leave a link here in the description box with her YouTube channel, but she's an awesome homeschool mama who does a lot of tutorials. She is really crafty, really artsy, um, super talented, and I love her videos, love her channel. So check her out. She's going to be talking about authentic homeschooling and staying true to yourself. And I wanted to jump in with that conversation because you can never get enough of these types of encouraging conversations in the homeschool community. And I think this is just a great topic. So I wanted to be part of that with her. So I'm going to talk about, well, mine is pretty much the same topic, but I just kind of labeled it just do you and I wanted to come from that perspective because I know a lot of you understand what that means just do you just be who you are be you and don't be anyone else so the first thing that I want to dig into is when you're being yourself in your homeschool it's really about focusing first and foremost on you and your family and your children you know you just your your family unit and focusing on what your kids need what is your husband like if you're married? Um, what is the culture of your home? What do you want to be the culture of your home? And that's kind of where you need to build your homeschooling. It's not about like looking around to see what everyone else is doing because that's not a good foundation for your home education for your children. Um, you need to begin to cultivate the culture of what your homeschool will look like. And once you're really secure in that, then you can start kind of looking around if you want. But it, you need to like really know what you are, who you are, who your family is, what you represent, what you're all about, what you're trying to do with your kids, what are your goals for your children. And this will really begin to form a philosophy for your family. So that's foundational. And that was my number one point. In doing you, you have to know who you are. You have to know what your family represents. You have to know what your philosophy is and what your goals are. That's how you do you. You first make some plans for your family. And then now number two is when you start looking around at curriculum and what other people are doing, it's fine if we're just doing a little research, see what folks are doing. But my second point really is to drop the comparisons because I think a lot of times we tend to go a little overboard with research and we actually start comparing our homeschool with other homeschool parents and you know we're so different and we're not going to look alike in any way and we start to feel discouraged or even slightly intimidated that we're not doing something right because this family over here seems to be doing something and that's working out really well for them and we feel like well maybe I should be doing that but it's really not the case because if you know who you are and you have your goals you know what your philosophy is you know what the culture of your home is and what you're trying to do you won't feel in any way threatened by what other people are doing in their families because you'll understand that that doesn't fit your goals for your family. So um, we do need to drop the comparisons. I talk about that so much, but it's because we need to talk about it more and more and more so we understand and really start to live that out because I do see a lot of just um, comparing ourselves to other moms and well, I see it. I mean, honestly, in, in the homeschool community, the blogging community, the YouTube community, the Periscope community, all of it, all the social media, no matter where we are as a group, as a community, um, and even, it doesn't even have to just be homeschooling, it could be anything, you know, any niche. But specifically within the homeschool community, I do see a lot of that comparing and there are some people that really seem like they have it together and they never have any issues and their Pinterest accounts are just awesome and their homeschool rooms are beautiful and that's okay though that they're that they have those things and it's okay that they're showing those things because they're they've worked hard for it and they want to show it and so it's okay if they show it on that end I'd like to kind of add that although we want to encourage one another like not to compare ourselves with one another we also want to, I think, as a homeschool community, not discourage each other from doing what we each feel is best for our individual families. And we don't want to 
judge one another, pass judgment, be overly critical, give unsolicited advice. Uh, it's just not helpful. And so I, yeah, I, I hear a lot of the whole, you know, just the arguments of, well, should or shouldn't we be doing hauls? Should or shouldn't we be uh, showing our beautiful homeschool rooms? Isn't it making others jealous? And those kinds of questions. I do see that happening on YouTube specifically. And just to address that, I would like to say that I think the motto to each his own really plays a big part in that and that we need to be able to step back and say, they're doing a great job in their home. Let's celebrate what they're doing. And even if I can't do that, even if we are unable to to emulate that, why would we want to anyways, right? But even if we're not able to make our homeschool room look as beautiful as their room, you know, that's nothing to be envious about or jealous of or anything. I just think we should just celebrate each other and be happy with the functional room that we have and beautify what we have to the best of our ability and be happy with what we have. Um, so anyway, I just I just really, really believe in being supportive of each other and to drop jealousy and drop judgments and criticisms. And I do kind of see some of that stuff happening. And I won't get into too much detail, but there's a lot of little bickering um, about whether or not we should, you know, the, do too many haul too many hauls you're buying too many things you're um, showing showcasing too many things you're making people jealous I hear that a lot and I just think that that's definitely not necessary I mean I think we all should have the freedom to showcase what we're doing and feel really proud of what we're doing and show it to the world and not feel like we have to hide it for anyone um, and feel feel that we're making other people jealous in the process because that's not I don't think that's anyone's intention so I just wanted to bring that out to the open because I do see that as a problem and it's been kind of like an underlying current and I do see it happening but I just wanted to bring that up and also um and so you know that was kind of my third point really um after cultivating the culture of your home dropping the comparisons don't compare yourself with one another and then just kind of avoiding criticism never be a critic of one another never criticize each other because I think when you're doing you it really doesn't hurt you as badly it just does not affect you emotionally when you see other people doing a great job in their homes it doesn't make you feel jealous or envious or anything it doesn't make you feel like you want to be critical criticizing so yeah do you be happy be happy with your room if you have one room that you are sharing um let's say you're you have one functional room for homeschooling that also serves as your dining room table be happy with that show it we all want to applaud it because we've all been there pretty much right um if you have one room dedicated to your homeschool awesome show it and don't feel ashamed to show it because somebody might be jealous don't be ashamed show what you've done and all the hard work you put into to beautifying your room and showcase it because it's good for the homeschool community to see diversity and to see all the different aspects of homeschooling and how we're all so different and how we all bring ourselves and bring our own differences to the table of home education, how it looks so different in every family. So I don't think anybody should be hiding, but neither do I think we should be comparing ourselves and feeling badly. So that's all that's all i wanted to share on this video do you and do it with the best of your ability do it with joy be happy in who you are be happy in what your homeschool looks like if you're not satisfied with how your homeschool is being run or how things look or how things are going then that's a job for you <laughs> that means you have your work cut out for you because you're not satisfied if you're not satisfied then you have some changes to make that's okay just roll up the sleeves get to work right and make it what you want it to be because we're ultimately in control of our destiny so make it what you want it to be and it may not be what's on Pinterest and that's okay but make it the best you can make it for your family because that's your calling it's your family your your children cultivating the culture of your home that is for you to do that's your job as mama so anyway I can go on and on and on with that. I really have a lot of passion about this topic and I'm really glad that I get to kind of uh, come along with 
a pepper and pie and and to do that with you and so thank you for the opportunity uh, for allowing me the opportunity to to kind of piggyback on what you're saying as well about bringing uh, authenticity to your homeschool so thank you all for watching and have a wonderful week bye